silver lining Keep your gaze on the sky Reach out a hand to the silver lining And remember the reason we fly Fly until you reach the silver lining Keep your gaze Eleven Wings, Book Three, Thorn Written by Brittany Chanel and performed by Von Dexter Montague II and Brittany Goodwin. Chapter 1. Thorn As Jamin stood frozen, his hand outstretched to an empty room, I saw myself a year ago. Seeing the paralysis that hits a man when he's faced with his worst fear brought me back to the night I lost Lily. That night, I took Lily's hand and raced her through the palace corridors. I heard the snarls of monsters, the bloodlust palpable in the air as they closed in. There were too many to take on alone, and if I fought, I couldn't guarantee Lily's safety. I was so sure we'd hidden from the bulk of them, and that if we'd stayed quiet and held on until dawn, we'd make it out. Lily squeezed my hand, and when I turned to look at her, her face was filled with calm surrender. Then, I noticed what she must have, seconds before me. We were surrounded. That's how Jamin looked, with his hand reaching for Valerie. His plea for her to stay still stuck on his lips. I knew the feeling well. Helpless. Afraid. Angry. I felt the same way the second that Valerie had appeared with those demonic wings. But even after seeing them... Jamin held out hope. The light had faded from his eyes so slowly. It had been hard to watch. It was all too familiar. I had my secrets, ones I'd hidden from him, like the lengths I went to keep Lily's body in Lux. Those secrets had stopped me from asking him what occurred a year ago, the night he first lost to Valerie. But if I had to guess, as he stood motionless with his hand outstretched, it must have been quite similar. Great. She got away. Is that what you wanted? CL blurted out. Horrified, I moved to intervene, but Arena beat me to it. Enough, CL. Can't you see he's hurting? She would have slipped away whether Jamin got to see her or not. Aye, Lily. This lot is a mess. CL scoffed. You still think she's innocent? Jamin was frozen, so I stepped in. CL, go relieve Farage of his post. Send him directly here. CL gritted her teeth. Then, in a flash of pink feathered wings, she was gone. Jamin lowered his hand, but didn't look away from the empty room, as if he was waiting for Valerie to pop back into Lux and say, Just kidding. Arena rested a hand on his shoulder, but Jamin slapped it away. He turned back to glare at us his eyes filled with a torrent of sadness and rage before he stormed back down the hallway the way he had come. Arena turned to me. We should have known. We fell for her whole story like fools. I scratched at my goatee. What do you think, Lily? It just doesn't add up. None of this is like her. I just can't imagine what Dusk has on her that would cause her to betray us. I turned as I thoughtlessly began to pace. Ajax, fine. That I could have predicted. He was power-hungry and envious. But Valerie? No. Something's wrong here. Arena let out a sigh. The emotional toll of the day's events had manifested physically for her. She brushed my cheek softly. I appreciate you trying to see the good in everyone but that kind of thinking will only hurt Jamin worse than he already is right now. He's had to endure the same betrayal twice. The last thing he needs is for you to put doubt in his head. For the time being, let's assume Valerie is aligned with Dusk and Ajax. The evidence certainly seems to point that way. She started down the hallway, leaving me to stew in my thoughts until she stopped short. You coming? I needed air, light. Whenever Valerie opened a portal to Nether, it would take time to shake the anxious energy that had seeped through. 
I didn't want to think about what it might be like to actually go there. The utter hopelessness and despair that the realm embodied. For now, that's where Lily's soul was trapped. And it was all my fault. Thorn, let's get some air. We walked through the corridor and back toward the stairs in silence as the loss of Valerie settled in. I'd wanted to be wrong about her betrayal after the eclipse. I'd bought into every lie she fed us since her return. And all the while, she was setting us up for future attacks, opening more ruptures between Lux and Nether. We were two Valkyries down with no king to lead us out of it. Without Lily, even my will to fight had dimmed. Arena and I reached the top of the staircase, her somber expression the only hint I had that she might be locked in a similar train of thought. As we crossed the ballroom, she stopped under one of the skylights, tilting her head back and letting the sun beam down on her face. I no longer had to wonder what she was thinking. Since the night of the eclipse, after her long and painful recovery, I'd wanted to ask her to recount the tale of how she'd lost her wing, but it never felt like the right time. She never spoke of that night, nor complained about the loss. She just went on, but every now and then, I'd catch her looking at the sun, her hands outstretched, her face turned to the sky as if she were remembering what it felt like to fly. We'd each lost something irreplaceable that night, and it felt like we'd been losing ever since. She pulled herself away from the skylight and continued walking through the ballroom like there had been no delay. I followed her to the balcony, and we sat on the railing, letting our feet hang over the edge. She sighed. The next eclipse is a month away. We wouldn't have had a chance without her. But with her fighting against us with Ajax and Dusk, it's completely hopeless. I stared out at the clouds as they passed, white, fluffy, and carefree. The sun shone through Lux, cold, distant, and apathetic. How did this happen, Lily? I asked. What is it that we can't see? I'd barely asked the question when I heard Irina sniffle. I wanted to reach out to her and offer her a bit of comfort, but I couldn't. The well was dry, and her team was broken. The king had put his faith in the wrong people and paid the ultimate price for it. Irina was right. We couldn't win. Nether would overtake Lux, and there was nothing we could do to stop it. Even if we couldn't win the war, one way or another, I'd get revenge on Ajax and Valerie. I'd make them wish they'd never been so foolish to linger in Lux. Chapter 2 Valerie I peered into the darkness, my hands outstretched and my pulse racing as I grew increasingly nervous. Dusk? I was met with rhythmic, deep rattling that I couldn't place— it was like a thousand screaming souls all crying out at once. It filled the air, weakening the sense I hoped to rely on most. A breeze whipped my hair, brushing my shoulders and making me jump as my mind turned every shadow and movement into a vicious ribbon ready to impale me. My heart raced, fear rising in me like a wave. Where is dusk? Was this all some kind of trick? My thoughts moved to Jamin's face, to the hurt I had seen in his eyes when I'd stepped through the portal. My certainty as I stepped through had hardly lasted a minute. I wondered if I could open another portal and go back. I would have taken imprisonment over this waking nightmare. Take a seat. Dusk's voice rang clearly in my head. I swallowed a mouthful of relief to hear his voice, but it quickly faded. What? Are you crazy? This place is crawling with Riven. Your anxiety will only draw them closer. I sighed reluctantly and lowered myself to the rough, stone-covered ground. Good, Dusk's voice said. Now, close your eyes and take a deep breath. This is insane. I should be on guard, not making myself an easy target. But I had no choice but to obey. I closed my eyes and surrendered to the probability that I'd never see the sun again, waiting for the moment when I'd, once again, be run through by the talon of a vicious riven. This whole mission was doomed from the start, and for what? 
I was in pursuit of the truth. I'd started to think I didn't want to go back. It's never a good sign when you're following voices that whisper to you in the darkness. Listen, Dusk said. I lifted my hands, palms up, and honed in on the thoughts around me. The rattling voices that had unnerved me rose and fell in a rhythm, and the longer I listened, the more I came to recognize it as the calming push and pull of the ocean. It was louder than normal, and after a moment or two, I realized it was likely due to the smooth stones I was sitting on. When the waves drew back from the shore, the stones rattled against each other, the sound muddled the air, but once I understood the cause, it no longer unnerved me. I let my breath sink in time with the waves and waited for further instructions. Several minutes passed, and I wondered if Dusk was waiting for me to call out to him again. Just as I was about to, his voice rang through my head. You're ready. Now open your eyes. When I opened them, I did not see a blanket of blackness, but a dark and misty coastline on a rocky shore. The ocean was deep purple, but each time the waves kissed the shore, they lit up bright blue like the Milky Way. I walked toward it to get a closer look. My footsteps glowed with the same luminescence as the coastline, promptly fading as I moved on my way. I stepped to the edge of the near black sea which reminded me of a starless sky in the dead of night. What do you see? Dusk asked. The ocean. It's beautiful, I said, staring out at the vast and empty horizons. I don't understand, Dusk. Where are the Riven? There's real danger in this realm. True evil. But in life, all beings are made of both light and darkness. We are taught to fear it. Sadness, pain, anxiety, loneliness, despair. But those are the emotions that lead to growth, change, empathy, and compassion. Without them, we'd all simply linger. Linger? You mean in Lux? We're all meant to move on eventually. To my left, I saw a shadow move against the sandy shore. I stared at it, trying to make sense of its dark shape for a moment. The mass moved, dispersing ashes and making it hard to determine its form. It drew closer, so I instinctively reached for my dagger. My stomach dropped when my hand skimmed across my pants and felt no holster there. What was I thinking? Coming to the nether realm with no weapon? I was completely defenseless. Stay calm. Dusk urged. Your ability to create portals between Lux and Nether has put some darkness in you. You have power here if you are willing to embrace it. Is this something you know, or are you working from a theory? I haven't led you astray yet, have I? To be determined. And also, you didn't answer my question. I figured that was best. Embrace darkness? Why did it feel like this dusk person was a demon sitting on my shoulder, urging me further into chaos? I squinted, watching the shadowy creature's movement as I tried to stay calm. But the mass was undoubtedly growing larger. I took a step back as the creature seemed to consume the shadows that made up the bulk of this realm. Its body stretched and sharpened, and I tried to swallow my fear to no avail as its limbs grew sharper. Dusk? A riven. Its movement grew more erratic. Dusk! Then his voice shot through my head, sending me into a panic. Run. Chapter 3 Thorn I sat at the edge of the lake with my feet in the crystal clear water. I sucked in a deep breath through my nose and let the rays of sun that slipped through the lush canopy beat down on my skin. The water cooled me, easing my body into a state of calm while my thoughts raced. When I'd first met Lily, she'd taken me completely by surprise. I was just a man in limbo in search of the reason why. She was still so full of life, 
eager to seize every day and make new memories. She had practically forced me to love her. Then I got the call to become a Valkyrie, and I wanted nothing to do with it. I could have happily spent eternity with her in Lux. The plane didn't matter as long as we were together. But she saw more in me. The admiration in her eyes, her belief in me, compelled me to take up the mantle, and I was glad for it. But ever since I'd lost her, I hadn't been able to remember why I had agreed. Lily, what a mess we've gotten into. It won't be long now until all of Lux is consumed by darkness. The water vapors in the air collected and morphed into her shape. She looked transparent with a bluish tinge. The shape was muddled like a disturbed pool of water, but otherwise, the forest had made a true likeness. Her delicate features were captured, as well as her mannerisms as she reached her hand out and brushed them over the surface of the lake. The forest could only mimic things it had seen, memories of her. So she never replied, and I longed to hear her voice. The image was enough to comfort me for a while. It was the only reason I went through the trouble to travel all the way to Lusterwood Forest daily. It was as if Lily was seated beside me, her long hair moving in the breeze, her lips forming into a smile as she gazed out onto the lake. Though the water replica paled in comparison to the real thing, it did make her absence easier to bear. I spent the better half of the afternoon strategizing. I didn't want to believe things were as bleak as they seemed, but I couldn't riddle out a way they weren't. Irina had broken the news about Valerie to Farage, and I was glad not to have the burden of enduring it. Through the rustle of the trees and the wind, I heard a rhythmic tapping sound that seemed to miss, even for a forest teeming with life. I listened motionlessly as the sound grew louder, one hard thud after another, a shallow, dull kind of sound that caused my ears to twitch involuntarily. I stood, slipping back into my sandals, and the image of Lily dispersed into a thick mist that scattered the sunlight before dissipating. I sighed, moving toward the sound, stepping through the overgrown ferns and beyond the tree line. I raised my hand, my fingertips burning with the magic that lay beneath them. How I missed the days when broad daylight meant safety from the riven. The rattling grew louder, so I ducked behind a tree and prepared myself for a sneak attack. I whirled around the trunk, fire slipping from my fingertips before quickly being snuffed out. Jamin stood a few yards away, his sword drawn and his chest heaving. His eyes were vacant and his expression empty, as if there was nothing left that could frighten him. Jamin, you startled me. He glared at me, but he was so still. I was certain he had no intention of replying. Are you getting some training in? Good thinking. He turned away, and the force materialized a medium-sized ribbon out of water droplets. Jamin sliced through it, and before his sword was back at the ready, a new ribbon sprung at him. It was hard to see him like that. I knew the pain he was in all too well. I knew I should return to the lakeside and leave it alone, but before I could think better of it, I spoke again. Look, Jay, I know you're in a lot of pain, but I'm going to save her. He said it so quickly that I thought I'd imagine him having spoken at all. But after a moment, his words registered, and I didn't like them. Not at all. Save her? In response, he sliced through another fabricated ribbon, the tip of his sword stuck into a nearby tree. And while he tried to dislodge it, a water riven landed an attack on his back, drenching him. He looked up at me, his features dripping with both water and annoyance. I felt the fire inside me surge, and my fingertips burned, urging me to release it. Did you say, save her? She's stuck in the nether realm, just like Lily. We need to go get them. I coughed as my own spit got lodged in my throat. Valerie isn't stuck. She went willingly. We all saw her. He continued to try and dislodge his sword from the tree to no avail. Lily was taken. The sooner you figure out the difference, the better. There's some reason. I know it. I'm not going to doubt Valerie again. He tossed his hair, sending water droplets everywhere. We just don't know everything yet. 
I clicked my jaw. Arena was right. They're losing it. You really need to figure out where your loyalties lie before the eclipse. He yanked his sword from the tree, his eyes flaring with anger as he walked toward me. His voice came out so low and hateful, it sent a chill through my wings. You are the last person that should dare rattle off that speech to me. You, who has your dead wife's body hidden under the palace. You, who speaks to her as if she can hear you. There's no damn evidence of that, Thorn. So why do you do it? I didn't know why he brought Lily into this. Not when the two situations were entirely different. My body shook, my inner fire setting my palms ablaze. I sprung forward, the raw impulse to shut him up roaring through me, but Jamin vanished. I stood stunned for a fraction of a second before I heard him snap a branch behind me. I spun, letting the flame engulf my fist and my arm as I swung for him. My arm crashed into a wall of water, which erupted into steam. My eyes widened as I took it all in. He'd used the forest to craft a water shield. It was clever for a madman. You've gotten slow, Thorn, he glared at me, with his sword pointed at my chest. Too much time calling the shots and hiding Lily's corpse at the palace and not enough time at the rupture. I sighed, wiping the cold vapors off my face. Watch yourself, Jay. There's dust all over you. I turned away and headed for a clearing so I could spread my wings and go look for Arena. I'd expected Jamin to be in bad shape, but I could never have imagined that after everything, he'd still trust Valerie. We needed to intervene, or if he met with Valerie on the battlefield during this next eclipse, he'd surely be the first to die. Chapter 4 Valerie I took off into the darkness, the unevenness of the stones threatening to throw off my balance. I felt the beast on my heels and the bloodlust in the air as I sprinted through the emptiness. I felt a powerful urge to look back, but my clumsy wings would surely block my view, as if the darkness wasn't enough. Maybe I can fly away. I spread my wings and felt their pull as they slowed my momentum. My balance faltered. Wait, don't, Dusk cried, but I'd already committed. I flapped my wings the same way I'd seen the others do and leaped into the air. In seconds, I crashed down, scraping my hands and knees against the stones. I cried out in pain as it rang like a bell through my head and body. The riven screeched and charged, and I braced myself for a swift end, but a shadowy figure stepped between me and the descending talon. Wings burst from the figure's back, and I knew them instantly. They were the same bony, bat-like wings that had kept me pinned to the stones. You made it, Ajax said. I didn't think you'd come. He turned to me, and I moved to catch a glimpse of the riven that had just been chasing me, but it was no longer there. Ajax held out a hand, and I took it, scrambling to my feet. He pulled me up. What made you come? I wasn't going to tell him that the Valkyries imprisoned me. Lie, Valerie. I, uh, thought I'd come to check this place out for myself. Crap, lie better. There's no way he's buying that. He smiled, and his green eyes filled with flecks of light. I'm not surprised. You and I used to come here all the time. He retracted his wings, which instantly made him seem less threatening, and, if I was honest with myself, more attractive. The danger, though, was palpable, and I shuddered to think there were more Riven close by that might attack at any moment. I looked around, my eyes searching for any sign of movement. It seems a little dangerous. His expression beamed with amusement. That's what makes it fun. Besides, it's not dangerous if you know what you're doing. I didn't believe much of what he said. He was the kind of guy you date to drive your parents crazy, but I wasn't sure what he could possibly say to make me interested in spending time in this horrifying place. All right, Ajax, humor me. Why did we used to come here? 
He shrugged. We liked it. I rested my hands on my hips, my palms still burning from my fall. Oh, really? What did I like about it? He scratched the back of his head. What do you like about it now? My knee-jerk reaction was nothing, but just before that riven had attacked me, I could see the beauty in it. It didn't mean I wanted to admit that to Ajax. He smirked as if he could clearly read that reply on my face. Follow me, he said, and I couldn't help but notice how at ease he was. He was borderline cheerful, unlike the last few times I'd seen him. I stood frozen, not trusting him enough to follow, but terrified of what might find me if I stayed there alone. I listened for dusk, but his voice was no longer in my head. Where are we going? I asked warily. I think it's time that you meet Dusk. He didn't wait for me to follow. He just assumed I'd go. I was reluctant but didn't see any other choice. After a few minutes, the gusts of wind tugging on my wings started wearing on my nerves. It was like carrying two giant umbrellas on a windy day after they'd already turned inside out. Ajax had retracted his so quickly after he arrived. I envied that trick. Ajax stopped short with a smirk on his face. He reached for me and I put my arms up defensively. His eyebrows rose. May I? I hesitated, but nodded as his calmness took effect on me. He pressed in on my shoulders, no harder than a shoulder massage, and my wings retracted quickly into my back. Whoa, how'd you do that? Do I just press here? Yep, you can train yourself to just flex that muscle, and they'll go in. But while you're still learning, you can push them to put them away, and again to pull them out. His timing was a little too good on that. I had a theory, but I had to test it out. Is it just me, or does this realm make you kinda... horny? Ajax stopped, his eyebrow raising as he turned to me. My eyes narrowed fear tearing through my body. You can read my mind, can't you? He grinned so brightly that my body went cold. He shrugged. Like your thoughts are that interesting. His voice rose to mimic me. Oh, Jamin, you're so sexy. My mouth dropped open, and I balled my hand into a fist. That's a complete invasion of privacy. What the hell? Ajax failed to stifle a laugh. We didn't choose our abilities. He put his fingers in quotes. Our traits, he said disingenuously, decided them. Don't use it on me. Relax. You used to think I was sexy too, for the record. I felt like I'd been slapped. What? Now I know you're lying. But I wasn't 100% sure. Did I think he was sexy? I mean, who doesn't love a bad boy, right? Oh shit, he can hear me. I mean, good thing I'm not into that whole son of Hades, prince of darkness thing, because... Prince of darkness? I have to say I like that. Oh my god, Ajax, get out of my head! He held his hands up in surrender, but did little to mask his wide, toothy smile. We walked for several minutes as I willed my thoughts to be blank, but the second my mind was idle, my embarrassment shot back into my head. Ajax chuckled, muttering under his breath, Prince of darkness, where do chicks come up with this stuff? The cringe was unbearable, but the nether realm was surprisingly okay. I'd only heard Dusk mentioned a handful of times, always as some kind of demon. But as we wandered through the vast lands of nether, I found myself looking forward to meeting him. That way, I could find out for myself. Chapter 5 Thorn I scanned the faces of the other Valkyries. Their attention locked on me as my last few words hung in the air. Farage exhaled loudly, leaning back in his chair and turning his face away. Irina's expression was unreadably calm, but unlike the others... I was afraid to take my eyes off of Ciel, who looked like she might spontaneously combust at any moment. 
I'd scheduled Jamin to guard the rupture tonight and tried not to think too hard about him calling me out about being out of practice. He was right. I needed to brush up and take more shifts at the rupture, especially with the eclipse approaching. I couldn't afford to be sloppy. None of us could. But tonight, I needed Jamin out of the way. I needed to let the other Valkyries know what kind of headspace he was in and figure out what we were going to do about it. I knew it, CL said through gritted teeth. She stood up from the table so quickly that I thought she was going to break it, but instead, she reached for a bottle of spirits and poured herself a cup, taking a swig before she even landed back in her seat. Irina dropped her face into her hands. We have to do something. If we allow him to fight during the next eclipse, she could take him down, and it doesn't sound like he'd put up a fight. We were all thinking the same thing but no one dared to reply with more than a nod. CL lifted her cup and downed the contents before she spoke again. Why are men so very weak? She eyed the bottle, so I nudged it closer to her. She glared at me, daring me to say something about her drinking. But I held my tongue as she topped her cup off. Finally, I spoke. Faraj, you're very quiet. What do you think about all this? He leaned forward onto his elbows, his reluctance obvious in the way he squirmed in his seat. I don't know. Don't know what? CL asked. He crossed his arms. I don't know anything anymore. If you had told me a year ago Valerie betrayed us, I would have thought it's impossible. Arena stood. We all would have. That's what makes this so hard. I think our only option is, wait, CL interjected. Does that mean you think she's innocent? He glared at her. I said I don't know. That's bull. I raised my hand. Enough, CL. Her posture slumped and I turned to Faraj. You don't have to be sure one way or the other. This is all a lot to take in. But we do need to take precautions to protect Jamin if this really is as bad as it looks. I eyed CL, waiting for another outburst, but she chose to sulk instead. Her legs crossed and her body turned away from the table. Faraj rubbed his hands together but shook his head. I don't know what you expect us to do. If the man wants to fight, he's going to fight. If he wants to believe in her, he's going to do that too. You guys tried to imprison Valerie, and that didn't turn out as you expected. We could... Force him to retire, to move on. The room went so silent that it seemed like everyone stopped breathing. It was an extreme solution, one that would leave us yet another Valkyrie down. But the alternative was losing him to Nether forever, and that wasn't a risk I was willing to take. Faraj broke the silence. He'd never go for it. He'd never leave without Valerie. He might if someone he trusted recommended it, someone he knew wanted the best for him? Me? You can't be serious. I'm not bringing this to him. Irina cut in. You want to save him, right? What do you think will happen if we don't do anything and the eclipse returns? Faraj scratched at his beard, but his gaze dropped to the table. He stood. I don't know why you're all ganging up on me. Whatever you decide to do to Jamin, I want to be left out of it. He headed for the door, but turned back once more. And just so we're clear, it wasn't long ago that Jamin trusted everyone here. I felt the stab of guilt as he left us there. I sat in the doubt he'd stirred up as my mind replayed the events of the last year. We couldn't afford to lose anyone else and it wasn't my job to either get us all on the same page or to get Jamin out of here by any means necessary. CL spoke. I say, we just force him to move on. My body tensed to shut down her suggestion, but instead, I found myself considering it a viable option. Maybe we give him a chance to go on his own, and if he doesn't agree, we send him, Arena suggested. Their gazes moved to me and I felt the pressure on me. Forcing someone to move on? 
it was certainly a gray area. If the choice was meant to be up to the individual 100% of the time, why then was it possible to send someone? Maybe we should wait. Ciel rolled her eyes. Arena said, I understand that you don't want to do anything rash, but Valerie could come back at any time, and when she does, she's definitely going to go to Jamin first. There's no telling what she could convince him of at this point. Fine then, I said. We'll each speak with him one on one. If he hasn't agreed to move on by then, we'll attempt to perform the ritual for his sake, but we'll be down another Valkyrie during the next eclipse. It's better than having another one against us, CL said. I couldn't help but agree. Chapter 6 Valerie I wasn't sure what I was expecting as we approached the dark palace. Perhaps spikes with dwellers' heads on them, or a moat full of blood. But the palace was every bit as beautiful as the one in Lux. The walls were dark with subtle swirls of color and specks of white, which reminded me of the night sky. The structure mirrored that of Lux, a perfect inversion that left me both disoriented and comfortable with the layout at the same time. Every so often, Ajax would turn to watch me, his green eyes scanning my face for a reaction. I knew what he wanted. He wanted me to love it here. He wanted me to admit that I found it beautiful. He wanted me to be like him. But the others felt betrayed by him, and before I made any rash decisions, I needed to find out why. More than anything, I needed to recover my memories. My mind was eerily quiet without Dusk's voice, and I wondered why he'd gone silent. I was on my guard as we entered the dining room, but even with my mind painting every shadow as a bloodthirsty riven or conjuring horrific images of Dusk, I couldn't have imagined who I saw seated around the table. My pulse raced, my eyes moving from one familiar face to another. They turned to me, their eyes dark and their demeanors fully relaxed. They snickered at me as I approached the table, drinking in my astonishment as I took stock of them one by one. C.L. leaned back in her chair with a lopsided grin. Farage pressed his fingertips together, with his arms half transformed into hawk form. Thorn had a small flame lit in his palm, and he seemed to be thoughtlessly playing with it. Irina was so still, she looked like a statue. I froze when I saw Jamin. His eyes were every bit as loaded with questions as they always were when he looked at me. Then I saw something that made my blood run cold. A frail shell of a person seated at the far side of the table, with ashy skin, sunken eyes, and features that walked the line between human and riven. Even so, I recognized her immediately. Valerie. What are all of you doing here? I blurted out. They all snickered inaudibly before Jamin finally answered, We could ask you the same. Ajax pulled out a chair, offering it to me with an upturned hand. I sat. They're not who you think they are. They're more like superpowered Riven, Valkram, shadows of the real Valkyries, the part that gets split when someone enters Lux. Where's yours? I asked quickly. I absorbed him. I'm complete, both the light and the dark. I wanted to keep my distance, but my gaze was drawn to Valerie. She stared vacantly at the table. So you're Valerie too? I asked, but the dark form didn't move. My gaze moved to Ajax. What's wrong with her? You took some of her with you. That's why the Riven hasn't completely swallowed you. You didn't want to absorb all of her because you were afraid you wouldn't be able to keep the darkness at bay. A switch went off in my head, an alarm that said I'd reached my creepiness limit for the day. I stood. Well, this has been fun, but I better get going. A new voice filled the room, a familiar one. Leaving so soon? I looked up, and a man with blonde curly hair sauntered into the room with a smile. 
His body emanated light, making me squint until my eyes adjusted. He walked around the table and held out his hand for me to shake. I crossed my arms, my defensive instinct kicking in and filling me with dread. You must be Dusk. So your memories haven't returned, then. What a waste. You were the only Valkyrie with any sense. I smirked. What about Ajax? He's merely following your lead. My lead? So I am a traitor, then. That's a matter of perspective, he said, his gaze moving to the zombie version of me. That's why you're here, isn't it? To rediscover the truth about Nether? I paused. That was why I was here. But I couldn't ignore the alarm bells ringing in my head. He didn't wait for my response. Walk with me, he said, holding his arm out. Unwilling to give in to my fear, I hooked my arm in his, and he began to stroll me out of the dining room and into the corridor. You know, we all experience this realm a little differently, it's true, he said cheerfully. It looks different to everyone. It's largely made up of our assumptions. I stopped and turned to face him. So I assume this place is bad, and then it looks bad to me. Precisely. Then how do we know what's real? He took a deep breath. There's only one way. How? He grinned brightly. It couldn't be simpler. You complete one little task for me, and I'll show you how. My skin pricked. Oh, you didn't think you'd get something for nothing, did you? It was obvious he was setting me up for something. I was sure whatever he asked me to do would surely drive a bigger wedge between me and the other Valkyries. But I couldn't outsmart him if I didn't know what his plans were. What do you want? Can I be candid? I wish you would. I want the Valkram to consume the Valkyries so they can reach their full potential. Why would I ever agree to that? He nodded. Why, indeed. But you have, and you will again once you learn the truth. Dusk wore a suit with clean lines, and he looked sharp and well-mannered. But in his sandy brown eyes, there was a depth I couldn't place. Hidden layers that held his secrets and true desires. He opened a door that led to a winding staircase. I followed Dusk into the dark cellar through winding passageways and into a stone tomb. Light poured through the smallest cracks in the door frame, and I squinted as my eyes adjusted. Dusk slid the door open to reveal a shining, ghostly figure. She lay motionless across a stone slab, radiating white light. What is this? This is Lily's soul. Her body was somehow separated from it and remains in Lux. I need you to retrieve it. Why? What is she to you? He shrugged. What is she to you? A total stranger, right? I mean, what do you owe these people? I figure it's a quick trip for you. You bring the body back to Nether. I'll show you what lies behind the veil and everyone gets what they want. What's going to happen to her if I do this? He scratched the back of his head. I'm not entirely sure, since I've never seen a soul outside of a physical form like this. But I'm assuming once I reunite her body with her soul... It'll be the same as when anyone other than the Valkyries gets pulled from Lux to Nether. So she'll die. The veil, Valerie. You won't understand until you see beyond it. Nothing I can tell you would make you understand unless you've seen the truth. If Dusk's goal was to get the Valkram to defeat the Valkyries, reviving Lily was probably quality bait for Thorn. But I had this nagging feeling that Dusk was telling the truth. Then something occurred to me. What if I reunited Lily with her body and somehow used a portal to send her back to Lux? Would that be enough to win over Thorn's trust? And if so, would it be worth giving up the knowledge of what was beyond the veil?
Chapter 7 Thorn I lay awake. My curtains were swaying in the breeze as moonlight pulled across my bedroom floor. I waited for the screams to start, just as they had the night of the eclipse. Valerie's ability to portal between Nether and Lux made her the ultimate threat, and we no longer had her loyalty. But it was something Jamin had said that kept me from sleeping. He'd compared his love of Valerie to mine for Lily. I wondered, had the situation been reversed, would I have come to Lily's defense, regardless of how things looked? Surely there was too much damning evidence for her to possibly be innocent. Even now, I could practically hear the dark whispers of her portal as it opened. I sat up, my arm engulfing in flames as a nervous bead of sweat slipped down my back across my skin. I held my breath and listened carefully. Valerie stepped out of the darkness into the moonlight. My wings sprung from my back, and I prepared myself for a battle. She tucked a strand of hair behind her ear. Her demonic wings were tucked away, but otherwise, she looked unchanged by her walk with evil. She eyed my flaming hand and turned away, walking over to the window and staring out at the moon. She basked silently in its light ignoring my threat. There were a thousand questions rushing through my head. Why had she come here? What horrors was she about to rain on us? But none of that came forward. I was too wary of her to risk my focus with conversation. Finally, as if she had been waiting for the moon to fuel her, she said, I wasn't able to discover the truth. We're not falling for that line anymore. She didn't bother turning to face me. But I found Lily... I froze, numbing anxiety coursing through my veins like crisp ice water. But she didn't leave me in suspense for long. It's a trick. No way I'm going to listen to this. My protest never found my lips. If there was the smallest chance that this was the truth, I had to hear her out. Or at least, I saw her soul. My response came against my will. My desire for it to be true, clouding my judgment. Is she... I started, my voice cracking. All right? Dusk asked me to bring her body to Nether to reunite it with her soul. I can't let you do that. My voice was so soft that I wasn't sure if she'd hurt me. I think Dusk is trying to lure you into Nether. The fire on my arm snuffed out. Are you? She turned to me shaking her head. I don't know what I believe yet. Like I said, I haven't been able to riddle out what happened last year. I found out that any of you could be swallowed by the darkness the second you step into Nether. And I could too if I'm not careful. I started to pace. That's not new information. We can't give Dusk what he wants. But maybe I can get her out alone. If you're lying, if I give you Lily's body, I'll have nothing left of her. You already have nothing left of her. This is her only shot. I swallowed a lump in my throat. She's lying. Her wings are hidden away so I won't be reminded of what she is. But if there's really a chance of getting Lily back, I have to take it regardless of the consequences. Valerie moved toward me. If we do this, you need to trust me. Can't have you getting emotional and putting yourself in danger. I have nothing to lose and she knows it. Whatever her plan is, I can likely stop her when the time comes. It would be better for the team if I figured out where she was going with this. Fine, I said, heading for the door. Follow me. I paused reaching at the wooden chest beside my bed and pulling out Valerie's dagger. I clenched my teeth reflexively as I handed it to her. Valerie's portal closed, and she fell into step beside me, sheathing her dagger in the holster on her leg. Look, I said as we made our way into the hallway. If you try anything, I won't hesitate to send you back to the darkness you came from. I won't make the mistake of trying to imprison you again. If she heard me, she didn't reply until several minutes later. 
How's Jamin? I felt my nostrils flare. I waited for her to defend her actions, but she didn't, and it was just as well. I wasn't in the mood to hear it anyway. The palace was quiet and still at this time of night. With the rest of the Valkyries on patrol, it wasn't likely that we'd run into anyone unless there was an attack. With Valerie here, I was expecting all hell to break loose at any moment. We walked by the tapestries, and my gaze moved to the one of Valerie, her white, fluffy wings proudly on display. I felt a pang of sadness. How had we lost so much? When we'd first lost Valerie, I'd always held out hope that she'd come back, but I never imagined it would be like this. As we descended the staircase, I was reminded of the last time I was here, dragging Valerie to a cell against her will. Now I was going to hand her Lily's body. The very last thing I had left. I stopped outside Lily's tomb, my hands shaking as I slid the door open. I walked up to the stone slab where she lay still, the serene look on her face frozen in time. I lifted her fragile body as Valerie walked to the other side of the slab. I looked into her eyes and didn't see her betrayal. Just my friend. Her solemn stare was enough for me to hand Lily's body to her over the stone slab. Wordlessly, she nodded to me as a dark portal opened behind her. I could see everything she wanted me to know in her eyes. I have her. Trust me. I won't let you down. But as she stepped into the darkness with my love, a surge of panic pushed through me. I leapt onto the slab and dove through Valerie's portal just in time to hear her scream, No! Don't! Chapter 8 Valerie My portal closed, my body shaking from overuse. I held onto Lily's frail body and gawked at Thorn. Why the hell didn't you listen to me? I'm not strong enough to open another portal. I'm sure this is exactly what Dusk wants. He was frozen on his hands and knees, his head down and eyes clamped shut. Did you hear me? I asked, moving in front of him. He lifted his chin, and I was struck by the tears I saw flowing down his face, dribbling from his chin. I hear you, my love, he whispered. You were telling the truth. I can feel her soul here. I scanned the darkness. I could move more discreetly if I were alone. But if I were attacked by the Riven, at least one of us could fight while the other held Lily. I understand, Thorn said. I couldn't hear what Lily was saying to him. But I hoped she would put in a good word for me. This was going to be a lot easier if Thorn trusted me. Thorn stood. I'll carry her. I nodded. Stay quiet and move quickly, I said. We moved through the darkness, and I could feel the riven shifting through the shadows, their malicious intent palpable in the air, far stronger than when I'd been on my own. I felt them inching closer and knew it wouldn't be long before we had to fight. If this got ugly, I wouldn't be rested enough to open another portal to get Thorn and Lily out. I felt the smallest tremor beneath my feet, but kept moving. We just needed to make it to the palace. Valerie, Thorn whispered. I didn't respond, as my focus was everywhere else. He pressed on. I'm sorry I doubted you. Look out! I yelled. A talon shot through the darkness right for Thorn. I pulled out my dagger and used it to knock it away from Thorn just in time. Before I could square up to the Riven, I felt a second one approaching from behind. My hand burned, and a dagger made of shadows burst into my hand. So this was what Dusk meant. I had no time to admire the new ability as the Riven closed in, and though unsure if I had it in me to stop two at once, I had no choice but to give it my best try. To my surprise, Thorn lay Lily on the stony ground, his arms bursting into flames. A purple glow illuminated the Riven as Thorn's flames slashed at them, sending them back. We both moved away from Lily's body, a calculated risk that meant she'd be unprotected, 
but probably safer away from the fight. Thorn's magic bought me a second, long enough to look back at him over my shoulder, at the stunned look on his face. His flames had started out orange, but now they had a purple-black flicker that reminded me of my portals. His wings shot out, dark and bat-like, and I spun as the riven in front of me charged me a second time. I jammed my shadow dagger into its side, and it cried out. Thorn leaped onto it, holding his flaming hand to the creature as it thrashed one final time and squealed out its last breath. I spun, ready to defend us from the second one. But it already lay lifeless, crackling with purple flames. Thorn returned to Lily's body, and as he lifted her, his expression became thoughtful, like he was trying to feel her soul. We were lucky there were only two. It's going to get worse as we near the palace. Do you know another way in? He nodded. Is it the same as in Lux? If so, we could fly in from the cliffs. It was a sound idea, but my mind kept conjuring the horrors that might befall us in the sky. Not to mention, I hadn't flown yet. I eyed Thorn. Beads of sweat slipped down his smooth head and rushed past his elfish pointed ears. Are you okay? The riven cut me a little. I'm fine. Which way's the palace? Crap. The purple fire and demonic wings. He's already being consumed, and we've only been in nether for a few minutes. I didn't have the energy to open a portal for him, and honestly needed his help to get Lily's body to the palace. My plan had been messed up from the second Thorn came through that portal. I could still salvage it, though. It was all about timing, and if I was a fraction off in my calculation, we were going to lose both Thorn and Lily to the darkness. And if I managed to save Thorn and not Lily, he'd never forgive me. He'd consider me a bigger traitor than he already did. You're planning something, Thorn said, watching me. Thorn, stay alert. If you see anyone, let me know immediately. Anyone? Who would I see here? I forgot Thorne didn't know about the Valkram. I wondered if that would have changed his approach. I made a mental note to explain it on the way. I pointed to the path where I'd walked with Ajax. The palace is this way. Let's get going. Chapter 9 Thorne For a year, I'd been whispering to the Void, knowing in my heart that as much as I loved Lily... My voice couldn't reach her. It had become a kind of ritual, a coping mechanism to help me process having lost her so abruptly. The moment I followed Valerie through the darkness, however, I felt Lily's soul. If Valerie hadn't been so on guard, those last few Riven might have taken us out. I need to focus. I'd been a brawler for hundreds of years, but I was truly afraid this time. It wasn't our location that scared me. I had something to lose again. I held Lily's still body to my chest as Valerie and I trudged through nether. My senses were on high alert, and I could hear the riven chittering in the blackness, waiting for their moment to strike. Valerie's demonic wings trailed behind her, sending a chill through mine. But now I understood. My own inner flame was a dusky purple here, marred by the sins of this realm. I stretched out my wings, they were still covered in black and red feathers. It was difficult to judge her given what she'd revealed in the last hour alone. She'd warned me not to enter Nether, but she would have known that if Lily was in any way involved, I wouldn't be able to stay away. No one wanted to believe in Valerie's innocence more than I did, but after being blindsided by Ajax, it felt easier to build walls than to risk that kind of pain again. Lily hadn't seen the aftermath of the Eclipse Night, she didn't see the toll it took on everyone and how painfully slow the recovery had been for each of us. Even now, I felt my heart recoil from Lily's soul, knowing the pain that awaited me if I failed to rescue her again. The sky gave off an eerie glow that seemed to stretch the shadows, making them feel alive. They threatened to stab us in the back as they shifted beneath our feet. I felt like a child conjuring monsters out of darkness, but the danger here was real. As I followed Valerie, 
I couldn't stop the feeling that she was leading me astray. All my instincts said we were headed in the wrong direction. As we walked, each step amplified that feeling. Doubt. Uncertainty. Anger. Fear. They all took root and sprouted, spreading through my body like poison. Then the cliffs came into view. It was unmistakably the entryway we were headed to. But now that we were here, I understood that this realm mirrored Lux. Valerie turned to me. By some miracle, we made it here without another... She stopped. Her gaze widening as it swept over me. W what I asked, growing increasingly anxious. You look awful. I need to get you out of here. Not until we reunite Lily with her body. Let's go then, she said, spreading her demonic wings. We're wasting precious time. I spread my wings, clutching Lily's body to my chest. My wings filled my periphery. They looked like Valerie's. She was right. Time was running out. My soul was being corrupted, and I didn't know how long I had before I'd be lost for good. Before I could take off, I heard the flap of wings and the rattle of stones as someone or something landed behind me. I spun, but with Lily in my arms, I wasn't going to be able to put up much of a fight. Valerie slid in front of me, but over her shoulder, I caught a glimpse of our enemy. Jamin? I said. But the longer I looked at him, the less like Jamin he seemed. His smile was wicked and twisted, his gaze condescending and cruel. It's not Jamin, Valerie said. He's a Valkram. The human-like riven strode towards us. Well, well, well. You managed to get him here after all, he addressed Valerie. His gaze moved to me. Give in to the darkness, Thorn. I felt a surge of despair course through me. Go, Thorn. I'll take care of him. I was frozen by fear as if he controlled the sensation, working it into my nerves and paralyzing me where I stood. Jamin grinned. You're not strong enough to save her. You'll only let her down again. I looked down at Lily, my mind replaying the night I'd lost her. Tears sprung to my eyes. A fist collided with my jaw, and I pulled Lily's body to my chest to keep from dropping her. I looked up to see Valerie with her fist outstretched. Snap out of it. Lily needs you. Before I could respond, she yelled, Go now! I spread my wings, desperate to find an emotion strong enough to lift me off the ground. Fear will have to be enough, I thought, as I took to the sky. Chapter 10 Valerie Jamin leaped for Thorn, and I threw my body between them. Jamin's wing tangled with mine, and we tumbled to the ground as Thorn disappeared into a thick layer of clouds with Lily in hand. I smiled, lavishing my victory as Jamin gritted his teeth, turning his attention back to me. His body was pressed against mine, his arms pinning my wings as a blaze of anger danced behind his eyes. He'll never make it. He will. You think Dusk set you on this task and didn't assign a guard for Lily's soul? Thorn can handle it. There's too much at stake. I retracted my wings and shoved him off of me. He laughed, getting to his feet. You think you hate me because I'm a Valkram. But there's some riven in all of us, even the incorruptible Valerie. I scrambled to my feet. As long as he was talking, Thorn was getting away but I needed to catch up to send him and Lily back through a portal. I pulled my dagger, but Jamin's Valkram didn't even glance at it. He snapped his fingers and everything went pitch black. My thoughts drifted back to my training in Lux, the training session that had turned to something else when the real Jamin had arrived. I moved to attack the Valkram, but he dodged, it took several bouts of attacks for me to realize that the Valkram was recreating the memory. I felt the same tension, the same heat as I had the first time. But here, 
lust somehow felt amplified. Jamin caught my arm above my head, and I knew what came next. But before I could think better of it, his lips had already claimed mine. Electricity tore through me as Jamin's Valkram gripped my ass and lifted me. He wrapped my legs around him and slammed my body back down against the ground, pressing hard on top of me. I could feel the real Jamin in every stroke of his tongue as my thoughts moved too quickly to be singled out. The Valkram was as much a part of him as the Valkyrie. Desire seared into me, clouding all of my other thoughts. The darkness amplified his touch as his lips moved to the side of my face. His tongue trailed down to my neck, where he bit down hard. My back arched and I felt the button on my pants pop open. The scrape of the stones beneath me hurt as he pressed down on me. But I wanted more. The darkness seeped deep into my veins, cloaking every other sense with desire. Tell me you want me he whispered. My response came automatically. I want you. His fingers slipped around my panties and into my body. My voice rang out through nether. The eerie light rushed back, concentrated around Jamin's hands. I could see in his focused eyes that he'd lit his hands in order to watch me. Seeing his lustful gaze only worked me up more and he slid his fingers in harder to watch me broadcast my pleasure louder than before. There at the cliff's edge, anyone could have seen, anyone could have heard, but it only made me grind my hips harder against him. Say you need me. Yes, I panted. I need you. My legs shook as a new wave of pleasure threatened to push me over. The shadows fueled my lust, and my hands ripped open the button on his pants. He wiggled his fingers, and tears of ecstasy slipped from my eyes. Yes, more. Give me more. I'll give you everything, he said, and my breath caught when I felt the warmth of his erection pressed against my body. I wrapped my legs around him, trying to pull him in, but he held strong, slowing his fingers and watching me suffer on the cusp of orgasm. Please, I begged, and he smiled a devilish grin. Tell me you love me. All at once, I understood. I could see through the cloud of desire to all of Jamin's fears and insecurities, all hanging on those five words. This was his Valkram, the part of him desperate for validation, the part of him who needed to hear those words. This was as much Jamin as the version I had come to know in Lux. His feelings were just as intense. Only here they were unbarred, unashamed, and raw. He needed to kill the Lux version of himself to be whole. Unless I killed this version first. Breaking the haze, I reached for my dagger. But his gaze began to move toward my hand. With my free hand, I cradled his face. I... Before I could finish, his lips landed hot on mine, and he thrust in. My voice echoed through never as his determined thrusts slammed into me, one after the other. My eyes rolled back, my body bucking beneath the pleasure as I ground my hips against him. What was I supposed to be doing? But as an orgasm once again threatened to start... I could only focus on the sensation. His teeth were gritted and his brow furrowed as beads of sweat threatened to drip. The tip of my finger touched the hilt of my dagger, and I closed my hand around it. Do it. Stab him and he'll be whole again. But I couldn't. I was too close to coming, too desperate for release. The darkness had won the battle of wills, and I didn't care. He pulled me onto his lap, grabbing a full handful of my hair and pulling me down. Oh, God, I hope the Lux version is this good. I held the dagger behind his back and lifted it. But he was pummeling my G-spot from this angle. I rolled my hips and he groaned. The sound triggered my orgasm, so I bounced my hips to scale the pleasure. Jamin's body jerked and I felt the eruption push into me. He pulsed inside of me as we grew still. 
My dagger gripped so tight that the markings of the hilt were imprinted on my hand. Do it. Do it now. But Jamin's face was buried in my chest as his body cooled itself down. I can't. After several minutes of stasis, he stood, zipping up his pants and running a hand through his hair. I fumbled with my buttons as one of my hands was occupied by my dagger. You meant to kill me, he said quietly. I... I looked down at my hands, unable to maintain eye contact. I couldn't do it. You don't have your memories. Is there another reason you can't? My eyes traced across his pink cheekbones, my stomach fluttering. I had no words to offer him. I wondered if all Riven kept so much of themselves or if there was something unique between Jamin and me that allowed so much to endure. A small smile played at my cheeks as the reality of what had just transpired hit me. He walked toward me and kissed me hard. A pang of fear filled me when I realized he'd taken my dagger. That's good enough for me, he whispered. Then he plunged the dagger into his stomach. I gasped as he fell to his knees, and I knelt to hold him. Black dust rose up from the wound and began to spread over his body. I could see how badly it hurt in his eyes, but he forced a smile as the dust began to sweep him away. Wait, I called. Please! Desperation and sadness overtook me. I think I love you. But he was gone. Chapter 11 Thorn I soared through the air, clutching Lily to my chest as I made my way through the dark clouds. The air filled with Valerie's cries. But before I could bank back to help her, I spotted the dark palace through the fog. I won't be much help with Lily in my arms and this might be my only chance to reunite her with her body. I had no choice but to trust that Valerie was strong enough to take down Jamin. I descended on the palace, and it was difficult to orient myself to the mirrored layout. My mind and body were so used to everything being in reverse, but to see the jewel of the Lux realm spattered with darkness filled me with a sense of dread. It was more difficult to spot the entryway in the dusky purple glow than the golden light I was used to so I had to fly much closer before I spotted the opening. I landed on the edge, but couldn't bring myself to continue right away. The walls were steeped in blackness, shadows moving across the walls, ceilings and floors like they were engulfed in black fire. The shadows licked towards the center, as if weaving a net for me to get caught in. There was no way I could get away with waltzing through the front door of the palace or dropping into the main hall through the skylight. This was my best chance. I looked down at her lifeless body. It was lighter and frailer than it had been when she died. Her pale lips marked her as dead. I can do this. I swallowed a mouthful of fear and took a tentative step into the shadows, half expecting them to consume my leg. Seemingly alive, they shifted beneath my foot, but didn't hurt me. I inched through the hallway and the dark flames danced, beckoning me forward. Then the whispers started. You're never gonna make it. You're gonna die here. You're not strong enough to save Lily. The voices were faint, but the words were unmistakable. I turned, scanning my surroundings for the voice's origin, only to determine that they were coming from everywhere at once. You are worthless. You've let the Valkyries down. You don't deserve her. Stop it, I said, pressing on. But each step was harder to take than the last. She doesn't love you. You're a failure. You saved yourself and let Lily die. I clenched my jaw and closed my eyes. Stop. Failure. I looked down at Lily, keeping my gaze on her. And for a few steps... I thought her face would be enough to get me through. But the voices got louder. I fought for every inch, my thoughts starting to sway with the narrative that the shadows spun. The voices licked at my arms, so I spread my wings and shielded myself. 
worthless failure. The shadows glommed onto my wings, and the darkness spread up them like poison. A searing pain shot through them, and my legs buckled beneath me. I knelt, burying my face into Lily's cold, lifeless shoulder. The voices were so loud that I might not have known I was screaming if not for the raw ache in my throat. All that was left was despair. The shadows crawled up my chest, their tentacle-like limbs grasping at Lily. I wanted to tell her I was sorry. I wanted to say goodbye, but I knew nothing but my own failures, and they lay heavily on my chest as the last of me was consumed. Then I saw a flicker of light at the end of the hallway. My eyes went right to it, and all I wanted was to survive another moment just to look at it. It glittered, bright and familiar. The more I focused on it, the larger it grew. It shushed everyone, and the voices around me quieted. I squinted and saw the light was beaming from a room at the end of the hall. I knew instantly that it was Lily, but her voice was no longer in my head. It was there, amidst the light at the end of the long, dark hallway. I struggled to my feet, the shadow snapping off me like overstretched rubber bands. The voices screamed, You'll never make it. I believed them wholeheartedly, but logic wasn't moving me anymore. I just wanted to die a little closer to Lily. I wanted to be a little closer to her soul when I fell. A few more steps were all it would take. I ripped the shadows off, one claw at a time. The light grew closer, arresting my gaze and fueling me forward. It streamed from the open door at the end of the hall. Golden beams, a newfangled sunrise, pushed back the shadows, and I ran with the last of my strength. Yet, the moment I turned the corner, the light was fully extinguished. I panted, blinking in the darkness. Lily? I called, but she was gone. Gone from my head. Gone from the room. Lily! I cried. I felt a sudden shift, and my racing heart nearly broke free from its cage as Lily's arm moved against my chest. I'm here, love, she whispered. I pulled her in and felt her arms wrap around me. I sobbed, unsure if this was a dream, but hardly caring either way. You're here, I said and pulled away, lighting my hand ablaze so I could see her face. That's when I noticed the man standing a few paces away. I let the purple flames engulf my arm to get a better look at him. But in my heart, I knew who I'd see. It was my Valkram. And I could see from the look in his eyes as he stared at Lily that he wasn't going to let her go without a fight. Chapter 12 Valerie. I sprinted across the stony path to the palace. All my hopes were on Thorn. That he'd made it and that I'd be able to keep the darkness at bay, at least until I got there and could toss him back to Lux. I needed my wings. I needed to fly the same way he did, but I didn't know how to. What if I don't go perilously high? What if I just glide along near the ground? That will probably be faster, right? I spread my wings, and they yanked me back as the wind resisted against them. I retracted them, catching my breath as I doubled over with my hands on my knees. I could see the palace in the distance. My legs were jelly from sex, and I couldn't remember why I'd thought that was a good idea. Heat rushed to my face, and I felt pleasure flare between my legs as I relived it. It felt like an eternity had passed before the palace stretched out in front of me, and several riven crossed my path as they paced in front of the double doors. They eyed me like I was a delicious morsel that they wanted to consume, but they didn't attack. But riven were the least of my worries. If I ran into another one of the nether Valkyries, I seriously doubted they could be bested the same way Jamin had been. I hurried through the black marbled hallways, trying to stay quiet despite a desperate urge to gasp for air. 
The palace was the opposite orientation from what it usually was in Lux, and I nearly turned the wrong way at each fork. Then I heard voices echo through the hallway. What do you mean he's gone? Dusk asked. He didn't report back on his last patrol. I scanned the area and he's gone, CL replied. I frantically searched for a place to hide, but the hallways were barren, save for a few suits of armor standing at attention on either side. I could easily imagine the crashing sound of the armor hitting the floor while I attempted to scramble inside. I ran to the end of the hall and hid around the corner, just as the voices grew louder. No matter. His Valkrum had been weakening since Valerie returned to Lux. Then your plan backfired, CL said. No, if the trade is Jamin for Thorn and Valerie, we can take down the Valkyries for good. The voices and the sound of footsteps began to get fainter, and I let out the breath I'd been holding. Did she bring us Thorn, at least? Dusk asked. Not that we know of, but Faraj and I could go join Thorn in guarding Lily. No. Dusk refused. Guard Valerie's Valkram. We need her to see the truth before she's whole, or else we'll lose her just like last time. Let me know if there is any sign of Thorn. Better yet, kill him where he stands. The voices were so faint that I could no longer listen. I was tempted to follow them and find out more. At least I knew that Thorne had somehow made it here undetected, if he'd made it here at all. I continued down the corridor until I reached the doorway to the staircase. Then I raced down the stairs. Each flight I descended brought an increased heat, and I felt something rumbling underfoot. The farther down I went, the more intense the inconsistent blasts were. Panic surged through me. There was no doubt in my mind that a battle was underway. I leaped down the next few flights, my knees straining from the pressure of each fall as I darted down. I landed at the bottom and purple flames poured into the hallway from one of the rooms. Thorn. I drew my dagger but wasn't sure what I could do. Thorn was a much stronger fighter than I was. If anything, I could get in the way. Thorn flew back and slammed into the wall. I stopped short, stunned. The darkness dripped off his demonic wings. A purple blaze shot toward him, and he deflected it with his arms. A second thorn stepped into the hall. I glanced back and forth between them, but they didn't notice me yet. I could throw a portal open to get thorn out, but I didn't know which one was the Valkram. If I sent a Valkram to Lux by mistake, he could do some serious damage. The man in the doorway rushed the other grasping the neck of the man on the floor. If that was my thorn, I couldn't just stand here and watch him die. Frozen, I watched for a sign, but there was no time. I charged in between them, burning my hand as I separated the two. One of them collapsed to the floor. Save Lily, he said through clenched teeth. She stays with me, the man in front of me shouted. My gaze moved beyond him, and back in the corner, I saw Lily, in the flesh. She pulled her legs to her body, clamping her eyes shut as she buried her face away from the heat of the flames. I leaped over some errant flames and bounded over to her, shielding her body with my wings. Now that she was moving, I could see how frail she was, and if I hadn't seen her tapestry hanging in the palace, I would have assumed she wasn't a Valkyrie either. After what I'd just experienced with Jamin, I knew neither Thorn nor his Valkram would want to harm Lily, but that didn't mean the Valkram would let me take her. Or that their battle wouldn't result in all of us being scorched to death. I lifted my hand to conjure a portal when a blazing hand clamped shut around my wrist. I screamed, but Thorn yanked me back, and I slammed into the wall, sliding down beside Thorn. Pain flared around my wrist where I'd been burnt, and all along my back where I'd hit the wall. The Valkram was far stronger than Thorn and me, and the way Thorn's eyes had glossed over made me acutely aware of how little time I had to get him back to Lux. The weaker he got, 
the stronger his Valkram became. I got to my feet, feigning strength I knew I didn't have. Get up, Thorn! Lily needs you! Before he even made it up, his Valkram grabbed him and tossed him to the back of the room. I heard bone crack, and Lily's screams echoed through the hall. I ran and leaped onto the Riven's back, conjuring a portal right below Thorn and Lily. As they dropped through, I slashed at the Valkram with my dagger, and he stumbled back, stunned by my brazen attack. I scrambled toward the portal. I reached for it, but the searing white pane of fire clamped in around my ankle. Thorn's Valkram dragged me away from the portal, and in a panic, I kicked with all my strength. Valerie! I heard Thorn call from the other side. The Valkram leaped for the opening, so I closed it, damning myself to an eternity of darkness. Chapter 13 Thorn The portal closed, and the last thing I saw was Valerie being dragged away by that monster, her hands reaching for me, her eyes filled with terror. I was knocked flat on the ground, in so much pain that I was sure that more than one bone was broken. But all I could think about was Valerie. She was trapped in Nether because she had helped me. She'd stolen Lily from my Valkram, and there was no doubt in my mind he was going to kill her. Lily leaned in and kissed me, her warm tears landing on my face. I was overwhelmed with emotion, joy, guilt, and anger. A bittersweet aftertaste lingered in my mouth, and I resented feeling so helpless. You're hurt. What do I do? She asked in a panic. Get Arena, I muttered, but the frustration felt more potent than the pain. Lily ran from the room, leaving me in silence, where my thoughts seemed to amplify. I had doubted Valerie. I imprisoned her, and she made the ultimate sacrifice for me. A stranger in her eyes. That was the Valerie I knew. That's why she had been chosen to be a Valkyrie. Somewhere in my grief, I'd forgotten that. My thoughts moved to Jamin, and I tried to sit up, only for my body to refuse the request. The moment I could stand, I'd go to Jamin. I'd tell him what had happened, and I'd do whatever it took to make this up to him. Lily was back. My Lily. It was a miracle. My mind reeled. I'd always suspected that part of us became Riven, but to see my Riven in human form, equipped with my abilities, made me shudder. He was much stronger than I was. A year of grief, doubt, and blame had fueled him to become a beast I couldn't defeat on my own. If that was what was coming through to Lux during the next eclipse, we really didn't stand a chance. Darkness began to eat away at the corners of my vision, so I closed my eyes. The pain began to ease on my limbs, and I wondered if I was slipping away. If these were my final moments, I would regret telling Lily to get help. I would rather have savored these last few moments. I didn't want to die as a man with a thousand regrets, but that's all I had left as I started to slip away. I thought I heard footsteps and whispers in the distance, but my eyes wouldn't open. I suppose I'll be absorbed by my Valkram. I'll be a weapon in Dusk's war on Lux and responsible for its downfall. I wish I was stronger, more trusting. I wish I hadn't doubted Valerie. If I were to do it all again, I'd let Faith win. Thorn! I heard a voice say. I opened my eyes to a blinding white light. Arena hunched over me, sweat beating on her forehead as her hands glowed. Standing beside her was Lily. She had both her hands covering her mouth, but it did little to mask her beauty. Her skin had regained its color. Her long, white blonde hair was pulled back into a braid, and she had fresh clothes on. How long was I out? Six days, Irina said. Please stay still. You're in no condition to move. Lily walked over and took my hand, rubbing it between hers. Arena's gaze moved to the far side of the room, and I wondered who else was there, but I was too afraid to move. 
Lorena's gaze moved to the far side of the room, and I wondered who else was there, but I was too afraid to move. How did you bring Lily back? Lily lifted my hand and kissed it. I only remember the eclipse and then waking up beside you. How did you save me? My thoughts rocketed back to my battle in Nether. I didn't. Valerie did. Before he even spoke, I could feel Jamin's energy spike as he crossed the room. You saw Valerie? My chest ached as I relived all that happened. I was wrong, Jamin. She sacrificed herself to get Lily and me out of there. His voice came out as a whisper. She's... dead? She tried to come back to Lux, but I saw her get pulled back by... Did you see her die? The sternness in his voice overpowering any sign of pain. I knew how grim it looked. But when I thought I was dying, I wanted to be the kind of person whose faith defined them. Wasn't it a miracle that I had gotten Lily back? Why then couldn't it be possible that Valerie had somehow survived? Lily's eyes were filled with tears. No, I said. She might still be alive. He stumbled back as if my words had struck him. I'm going after her. Wait, you can't stop me. I didn't blame him for thinking I would. I'd been a terrible friend to them both, but I had no intention of staying on that path. I'm going to... Arena's gaze moved between us. That's a lot of Valkyries at risk. Who's going to protect Lux? Her kind eyes swept over my face, making me wish I could hide from them. If Valerie goes down, we have no shot of surviving the eclipse anyway. Jamin nodded appreciatively. You're in no condition to fight, Arena warned. My wings twitched. He needs me to show him the way. How long until I'm back on my feet? Three days. I looked up at Jamin and could see from the panicked twitch of his brow that three days wasn't going to cut it. How about one night? How recovered can I be by tomorrow morning? She sighed. Be careful. I turned my gaze to Lily. She nodded tearfully and then released my hand. I was sure she wanted Valerie back more than anyone, but we were taking a huge risk, and we'd only just found each other again. Perhaps that was the trait that had drawn me to Lily in the first place. Perhaps it was her faith that somehow brought her back to me. Perhaps it would see us back together again. Chapter 14 Valerie Ajax paced in front of me, dragging his feet as he went. Cold steel rubbed against my raw wrists, making them sing with pain. My Valkram sat in a chair at the center of the room, but the rest of the black marbled space was barren, so my only choices for entertainment consisted of watching her grow more powerful and human-like, while I withered away in chains and the occasional visits Ajax made to my cell— where he paced and lectured me. Fortunately enough, he hadn't started his lecture, and I hoped he was in a non-talkative mood. You brought this on yourself, you know. I sighed. Here we go. If you had given this realm a real chance, you would have understood. You wouldn't have had to do this the hard way. You were already consuming your Valkram. You could have just shown me behind the veil. You're not ready. You weren't ready last time, and that's how we lost you. You didn't give me that chance. We had to stop you. You stole Lily's soul. That belonged to Dusk, Fair and Square. You meddled in something that you had nothing to do with. I need you on my side. I need you to unite with your Valkram as an agent of darkness. And if I don't? This realm will do it for you. I pulled on my chains, but they dug into my wrists... You coward! You don't want me to see the truth, do you? Do you want to know what I think? I think you lied. I think you're holding me captive because you don't want me to choose Lux like I did last time. He stopped in place. No. He turned to me. You chose Nether. I'm sorry if that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the truth. But that doesn't mean I think you're this big hero like Dusk does. 
You came to me because you knew I was the only one who would never believe you about Nether, and you still chose Jamin over me. I swallowed a lump in my throat. I vaguely remembered something from the torn out pages of my diary that were to that effect. You keep forgetting, I don't remember any of that. Then listen. The three of us were close. I don't remember when things changed, but one day, I realized that Jamin and I were both in love with you. I didn't want to lose you or what we had. I couldn't risk it, so I kept my mouth shut. And apparently, your friendship meant nothing to Jamin, because he just came straight out and said it. I've always wondered what would have happened if I had just been brave enough to say something first. My stomach turned with unease, and my Valcrum grinned, no doubt gaining more strength with every dark thought that passed through me. Ajax continued, his green eyes landing on me. So, the night of the eclipse, when you saw the truth, you begged me to go with you to Nether. I thought that meant you chose me, too. And I didn't. Ajax tilted his head back and looked at the ceiling as he let out a sigh. You just couldn't live without him. You couldn't convince Jamin, so you came for his Valkram, and I had to watch you choose him all over again. I wasn't sure I believed the tale he was spinning. Every story had multiple sides. I couldn't see myself choosing Nether, even if I was drawn to it in some ways. However, Ajax seemed sincerely bothered by the Jamin part. How could I deny the pull I felt toward him? Dusk told you that you needed to consume your Valcrum to handle the truth, but you were sure you were strong enough without the darkest parts of yourself. You left me to rot in the Dark Palace after I'd followed your every order, and instead of returning my feelings, you took Jamin with you on your quest to see beyond the veil. As I watched him tell the story, I wished I had our lost friendship to call upon, something to endear myself to him, because I wanted nothing more than to break free of my chains and punch him. My Valcrum snickered. I watched Ajax closely and asked, why didn't you just go back? Because before you went to the Vale, you made me promise to stay. Ajax ran a hand through his black and white streaked hair. Then, Jamin's Valcrum returned from the Vale without you. He said you'd been consumed by the darkness and you had begged him to let you go. And apparently you got spat back out in the rupture a year later with no memory of any of it. Let me get this straight. I discovered something about Nether the night of the eclipse. Then I came here to confirm it by seeing past the veil, at which point I chose to be consumed by darkness. Why would I do that? I supposed that's what Dusk had meant when he said I wouldn't understand. I eyed my Valcrum but as she fiddled with her dagger, she looked anything but withering. Crap, Dusk's plan is working. It won't be long now before that's the real Valerie, and I'm a pile of bones ready to be turned to dust. I need to get out of here. Ajax, you don't have to do this. You don't like the easy way, apparently. I was sure that without your memories, we could have a fresh start. Maybe we could have. I haven't made up my mind about you until you imprisoned me. He strode over to me and knelt with a hand around the bar of my cell. Now at eye level, he scanned me, the softness of his green irises like a meadow in summer. Let me out, Ajax, I pleaded gently, hoping to appeal to the part of us that had once been friends. So, you haven't made your mind up yet about Jamin either, right? N no. I stammered. I'm not sure how I feel. His eyes darkened. Then why did you screw him? He stood, and the cell filled with the sound of me reaching climax. Ajax didn't wait for my explanation. Instead, he left the room, closing the door behind me. My Velcrum stood and kicked the chair at me. It splintered against the bars of my cell, its crash reverberating throughout the room. Looks like it won't be long now, she said. I didn't need to see my hands to feel the darkness snaking up them. I could practically taste the poison as my last shards of hope started to slip away. 
If what Ajax had said was true, I'd chosen this end for myself. I really had betrayed the Valkyries, and I was going to die without ever knowing why. At least I'd been able to help Lily escape. Maybe that would be enough of a win for the Valkyries for them to rally against Dusk. My thoughts moved to Jamin. I'd let him down again. I was beginning to wonder why he'd ever loved me to begin with. Maybe the Valkyries were better off without me. With each thought, I felt myself grow smaller and smaller, my energy seeping directly into my Valkram, who was practically glowing with power. I dropped my head. It won't be long now. Chapter 15 Thorn I was sore, but the pain became manageable by nightfall. Jamin had asked me to go over every detail of my quest with Valerie, and when he was satisfied that he had all the information, he left to relieve Faraj from his shift guarding the rupture. I knew he was probably driving himself crazy worrying about Valerie. I knew because I felt the same way. Lily ran her hands down my chest. Her body pressed against my back as she kissed my ear. I closed my eyes. This feels like a dream. It was the moment I had been sure it would never come. I had Lily back. I was complete again, but even the warmth I felt from her touch wasn't enough to keep me present. I couldn't block out how she had come to be here and who I owed. Lily stood and walked over to the window, and I felt a pang of guilt. She knew me too well not to notice how distracted I was, and she deserved better. But when she turned back to me, she just smiled. She walked back to the bed and kissed me so hard that I had no choice but to be consumed by her. She was the antidote to every poisonous emotion I'd ever suffered. Lily, the perfect panacea. My troubled mind stilled, and I reached to pull her onto me, but she pulled away. I leaned forward, stunned, reaching for her, but she was already off the bed, pulling a robe over her sheer nightgown. What are you doing? I asked sitting up straight. Go now, she said. Valerie would do the same for you. I stood quickly. But it's our first night, she blushed. It most definitely is not. Go, Thorn, so that when you come back, you'll really be here. I'm sorry, I whispered. But her crystal blue eyes held no consent. I promise I'll make this up to you, I said, and began to dress. She grinned. You better. Bring our girl home. I grabbed my sword and went to the window, where I spread my wings. I looked back over my shoulder at Lily, and for a minute, I didn't think I could force myself to go. Not after I'd seen how soft her skin looked in the moonlight. Not after I'd noticed how her wet eyes glistened but Valerie had helped me, trusted me, even when I couldn't do the same for her. I wasn't going to be able to rest easy knowing she was still in that awful place. I took to the sky, heading straight for the rupture. My wings ached as much as the rest of my body, and I knew I'd have to rely heavily on Jamin for this mission to be successful. Who knew what kind of shape Valerie would be in? The bleak odds did little to deter me, though. At least if I died... I'd have fewer regrets than when I had thought I was dying last week. The moon blinked out as I passed into the fog that surrounded the rupture. The air was filled with the clashes of battle. I heard Jamin grunt, swinging his sword at a ribbon. It was too dark to see him, but I followed the sound, landing out of striking range in case I startled him. Jamin! I called, and I heard the squeal of a ribbon as it gasped its last breath. Thorn! What are you doing here? You should be resting. Let's go get Valerie. I felt something sinister move, but before I could even light my hands, Jamin's sword sliced through the monster. He turned to me as he wrenched his sword from the beast, and Jamin's powerful blade illuminated us both. His intense gaze landed back on me. What? But Arena said you'd need it to rest, and Lily, I can't rest knowing she's stuck there. And based on the way you're hacking at these ribbon, you can't either. 
I can't ask you to give up your first night with Lily. You're not asking. I'm telling you we're going to get her. He didn't move, so I continued. Look, Jamin, I was wrong about her. You knew Valerie was innocent the whole time, and it took her risking everything for me to understand. If she had her memories, she would kick my ass for what I did. Jamin smiled. It's decided then, I said. He nodded. How bad is it over there? I swallowed a lump in my throat. It's a nightmare. The ribbon are stronger, and the Valkyrum are not only real, but lethal. They have every advantage there. But that's not the worst part. Tell me. The longer you're in Nether, the more you lose yourself. It's like your Valkyrum drains your power. His gaze dropped, and I could tell by the way he shifted. He wasn't thinking about his own safety, but Valerie's. Jamin, you have to promise me something. His eyes met mine, the flicker of his sword's magical light ablaze in them. You can't fall apart if we can't save her. You'll want to. Nether will make you think your only choice is to give up. But no matter what you're feeling, if you surrender to it, everyone in Lux will fall without you, starting with me. Understood. His response was abrupt. He turned toward the darkest part of the rupture. His wings spread and I followed suit. His eyes lingered on my wings for a moment. They were still featherless and dripping with riven dust. I could see the thoughts racing behind his eyes, but he took off and I willed my body to follow. With each inch closer we flew to nether, the fear inside me amplified. I could almost taste its bitterness in the air. I fought the urge to turn back as Jamin's light faded. I looked back over my shoulder, and the unforgiving darkness of the rupture seemed bright by comparison. My wings beat against the air as I flew blindly into the nether, hoping that this time I'd be strong enough. My stomach dropped when, just seconds after we flew through the rupture into nether, I heard Jamin cry out in pain. Chapter 16 Valerie I watched my Valkram attempt to open a portal for hours on end. The edges sputtered to a glow, then fizzled into dust outside of my cell. Even though she possessed my memories, it didn't seem to come as naturally to her as it did to me. Even so, each attempt looked closer to the real thing than the last, and I shuddered to think what would befall Lux if she succeeded. After the last one, she grinned at me as if she expected me to cheer her on for leeching my power. I was starting to think the attack on the party was her doing, and that she hadn't been able to recreate the act since. There was some reason that Dusk wanted me to choose darkness instead of just letting me die here, and my wager was that some Valkyries simply make shitty Valkram. Of all of the Valkram that I'd come across, Ajax was the strongest. Combining both halves appeared to make the best warriors, but maybe that all depended on which was the dominant half, Lux or Nether. It seemed that Jamin's Valkram had been pretty weak to begin with. That's why he had been so easily bested, probably because the Valkyrie in him was so strong. From what I saw, Thorn seemed to have an even split, which would explain why his Valkram seemed stronger in Nether. I'd barely even caught glimpses of Ciel's or Farage's Valkram, and part of me was curious. Seeing a new side of Jamin made me feel a deeper connection to him. Or perhaps inhibitions were fleeting in this realm. Ajax had seemed so hurt by what happened. It left me wondering how much he actually knew. I waited for him to return, hoping to probe him for information before the last bit of my strength drifted away from me into my Valkram, but he didn't return. I was drifting in and out of consciousness when Ajax's voice outside the door jogged me awake. Where have you been? I need to talk to her. It was unmistakably Jamin. How? My stomach fluttered. She's my prisoner now, and there will be no conjugal visits, I'm afraid. Jamin scoffed. 
I heard a scuffle, loud enough to prompt my Valkram to look towards the door. Break it up, someone said. I recognized the voice as Thorns. Give him a few minutes. He won't do anything stupid. Besides, I think Dusk was looking for you. Fine, Ajax said, but keep an eye on them. I held my breath, and Jamin stepped through the door. Whatever hope I had that it was his Valkyrie vanished the second I saw him. He was cloaked in dust, his dark eyes were dim, and his wings were as demon-like as they had been the last time I'd seen him. But how in the world had he managed to survive? I had seen him fade to dust by his own hand. Jamin's gaze went first to my Valkram, then slowly scanned the room before landing on me. His expression was stone-like and unfeeling, and disappointment settled at the bottom of my stomach. Thorn stood in the doorway, his gaze darting back and forth between the room and the hallway. Jamin walked over to my cell and knelt beside me. He stared into my eyes, his expression empty and unfeeling. He was far more indifferent than he had been a week ago. Can she portal away? He asked as if I wasn't even in the room. I could see the despair in him. Hopelessness. But something intangible struck me as more than just a lack of hope. My Valkram answered, No, she's way past that point. I've got all of her power. Won't be long now. Want to see? He stood, his face brightening as he turned away. Yes, show me. My Valkram lifted her hands and began another attempt. A few seconds passed and nothing happened. I bit my bottom lip to keep from laughing. I wondered if the performance anxiety was due to the feelings we both shared for Jamin. Finally, the dust began to swirl. A purple glow flared around the edges. Crap, she's going to do it. Dread filled me as the image of Argus, as he was attacked by the Riven, jolted back into my head. Jamin smirked. Not bad. Maybe you need a little encouragement. He walked over to my Valkram, and her face glittered with excitement. I felt a pang of jealousy as he leaned in and pressed her against the wall the way he had once done to me. My face burned hot as he leaned in and kissed her. I wanted to call out to him, but I had nothing to say. The dark dust around my wrists snaked up my arms as a heaviness settled into my chest. I knew what was happening immediately. My heart ached and my thoughts were clouded with defeat. I felt a warm streak run down my cheek as my heartbeat slowed. My hair pushed out of my face, brushed by a gust of wind, and I looked up to see a portal spitting energy as it hummed with life. That's when I heard the whispers. Give up. You're a traitor. You caused all this pain. You're not worthy to be saved. The sound of the voices rose until they roared. Then, everything went dark. Chapter 17 Thorn I listened for footsteps in the hallway, but it was difficult to pay attention, considering how bad Valerie looked locked in her cell. The black dust that had almost consumed me now ate away at her limbs. Her eyes had no light in them, and her expression was indifferent. She must have been hearing the voices. Jamin didn't look much better. He'd held his own against the Riven, but I was still weakened from my last trip to Nether. He had underestimated their increased power. He was wounded, the despair of Nether creeping in, and I was certain we weren't going to make it to the palace, let alone find Valerie. We came across Farage's Valkram. We were so defeated that he mistook us for Valkram, and led us into the palace. Somehow, we'd managed to keep up the ruse and not run into our Valkram counterparts. We were pushing our luck. I peeked back inside the room where Valerie was being held captive. Jamin had her nether form pressed against the wall. Does he know that's the Valkram? It was easy to overlook the dark, dusty mass behind the bars, especially since the Valkram looked more like Valerie than she did. I wish we'd had time to make a plan. This one had been thrust upon us, I checked the hall, but a familiar sound drew my focus back to Valerie's chamber. 
a portal swirled to life. Light poured through it from Lux, making the Valcom turn away and block her eyes. It hurt to look at, but I was drawn to it nonetheless. Of course, Jamin had a plan. The portal was our way home, but it would do little to help us if we couldn't find a way to unchain Valerie, and fast. I scanned the room for keys. A fractal of light sparkled from an object that hung from the Valcom's belt. But before I could make my move, her gaze rose to me. Her eyes widened. You're not Valcrum, she accused, pointing to me. Jamin turned, his eyes narrowing. Are you sure? How can you tell? The light. It doesn't affect him. Jamin lunged at me. His half-hearted attack jazzed up with a battle cry. We toppled to the floor, and I froze as I saw Valerie wield her dagger, glistening and glowing purple. Jamin turned slowly, moving to my side at knife point. You're more convincing, the Valkram said to Jamin, but not convincing enough. We must have come to the same conclusion, because my arm and Jamin's sword ignited simultaneously. We leapt for the imposter in unison. The Valkram stepped back through her portal, and it closed too quickly for us to follow. We stood, stunned for a moment, contemplating what we'd done. Something slammed into the side of my head as the imposter charged at us through a new portal. Jamin slashed at her in vain, nearly cutting into me instead. Each time Valerie's Valkram reappeared, she clobbered one of us before disappearing through another portal again. Darkness began to close in around my eyesight. Valerie's glowing dagger connected with Jamin, and he collapsed to the floor. When we were both down, Valerie's Valkram didn't bother jumping back through her portal. Instead, she left it buzzing idly in the corner of the room. Jamin! I called but he didn't move. Dust began to pull at the ends of his fingertips. The Valkram kicked Jamin's body, and he slammed into the bars of Valerie's cell. I scrambled to my feet, lighting both my arms ablaze and shooting fireballs at her in quick succession. She dodged them easily, beaming at me with a triumphant smile. I rushed her, my flaming fist weakening as she blocked it with ease. A loud click drew her attention to the cell, distracting her for a moment, but it was empty. On the far side of the room by the portal, Jamin stood with Valerie in his arms. I flung myself across the room, and Jamin yanked us both through. We landed somewhere in the rupture with the glowing portals opening around us, Riven pouring through them. We flew towards Lux as winged monsters screeched nearby, their sharpened claws missing us by inches. We burst through the threshold into Lux, but it was still the dead of night. A torrent of Riven burst through, pausing briefly to hiss at the moonlight, a claw shot out an attack from a new portal, and Jamin plummeted from the sky. I raced to catch him and Valerie, but something sharp collided with my wing. I crash landed beside them. I tried to get to my feet, but my body screamed with pain. Neither Jamin nor Valerie were moving, and a fresh batch of riven charged us. Among the screeches of the dark beings, I heard a familiar sound. One that didn't belong to the enemy. A giant hawk flew in front of the moon before diving straight for me. Farage. But he was too far. A riven, the size of a house, crawled out of a portal just a foot away. I tried to light my hands, but they were too steeped in darkness. I stumbled back, fear destroying the last of my hope. A pink flash rushed by me, and the riven exploded, sending a cloud of dust into the air. CL grinned at me over her shoulder. Her eyes lit with the same determined fire as always. Faraj's hawk form swooped over Jamin and Valerie, tearing Riven away from them. It was odd to see them both so alive and strong. Neither of them had been weakened by Nether, and I could scarcely remember if I'd ever looked that self-assured. Portals continued to open, and I tried to stand in vain. Ciel and Faraj were putting up a hell of a fight, but there were just too many Riven for two Valkyries to stop. We weren't going to make it. We're all going to die right here. I wasn't sure if it was the voices from Nether affecting me, or if I was just reading the situation practically. Meanwhile, somehow, neither Ciel nor Farage were slowing their attacks. Can't they see it's hopeless? Why are they still fighting? The Riven closed in, and Ciel let out a cry of pain as Riven sliced her arm. She tossed her sword to her left hand and continued to fight. It 
it's no use, I tried to say, but my voice was too faint for them to hear me. Then I saw it, the first golden ray of sun over the horizon, then another. Farage landed hard on the ground, shifting back into his human form as Riven clamped their jaws around him. A third ray of light burst from the horizon line. Don't give up. Ciel was backed up. Her heels pressed against me as she blocked two Riven at once with her blade. Don't give up. Hold on. Ciel fell back, and my inner fire lit my entire body aflame in red. I summoned the last of my courage and stood, sending balls of fire in every direction, snuffing out the Riven closest to us. But it wasn't enough. A Riven bit down on my arm, its sharp teeth tearing through my flesh. It screamed as it burned in my fire. I sent all my power to cover the other three and let my body serve as the shield for Ciel and me as one riven after another sunk its teeth into my arms. Don't give up. The edge of the sun peeked over the horizon and the riven writhed in pain. The portals stopped appearing and the riven began to slink back toward the rupture. Blood gushed from my arms and I collapsed beside Ciel. A few yards away, Jamin... Valerie and Farage lay dormant. The sun poured its cleansing light into Lux, and I wrestled with my consciousness to stay awake. The sunrise blazed with oranges and reds in homage to my inner fire, and birds flew overhead to welcome daylight with their scattered song. The Valkyrie, at least, had bought the realm of Lux another day. Beautiful sunrise, Lily, I whispered, and for the first time since I'd lost her, I found that I wasn't the least bit afraid. This has been Eleven Wings, Book Three, Thorn, written by Brittany Chanel and performed by Von Dexter Montague II and Brittany Goodwin. Stay tuned for the next book. Fly until you reach the silver lining. Keep your gaze on the sky. Reach out a hand. To the silver lining And remember the reason we fly Fly until you reach the silver lining Keep your gaze on the sky Reach out a hand to the silver lining Remember the reason we fly